for years now, helmet companies, athletic trainers, as well as coaches have been trying to limit the amount of concussions that their players get throughout a season. And it wasn't until recently I got a text from a friend asking what these collars are that these NFL players are wearing. Then I started to investigate a little bit more and found out NFL superstars like Tony Pollard, Drew Tranquil, Shaq Thompson all have these collars around their neck. So I did a little bit more investigative work and found Suzanne Williams, the VP of this company called Q Collar. And what they developed is actually a piece of technology that could help save the future of football. Let's check it out. So I have to share information about the Q Collar. The Q Collar is a class two medical device. It's yep. FDA cleared. And what it does is it puts slight pressure on your jugular vein. So it allows blood to go up into your head like normal. But as it's recirculating back to your heart, it slows down just, just slightly. And that slight slowdown allows a little bit of extra blood to remain in your skull. That extra blood surrounds your brain, fills in the gaps and helps reduce brain slosh. So your brain can move freely within your skull normally. And so if you can find a way to help, you know, create a tighter fit for your brain within your skull, it can help mitigate that brain slosh, which we all know that brain slosh leads to injuries. Mm. So let me back you up a little bit. How did, like, how did you find this out? Like, I, I know you guys have a, a large team of doctors and everybody else. Like, where did this idea originate from where we could, hey, let's throw a collar around these players and it will reduce the brain slosh. Like, where did that all derive from? Yeah, about over a decade ago, um, oh, wow. the inventors of the Q collar were trying to actually work with the uh, military. They were working with the military and they were trying to find a way to help protect soldiers from TBI, traumatic brain injury especially the war fighters that were in Afghanistan. And they were at a medical convention and they were just talking about what can we do? What can we do? And everyone was focusing on the outside in, right? Helmets and, and the same kind of protocol that they've been using. And one of our inventors, Dr. David Smith, actually started thinking, well, how do we fix it from the inside out? You know, there's gotta be something we can do. And he just really started thinking about, you know, how, what, what mechanisms in our body could we trigger? And he thought about jugular vein. And so he started researching the jugular vein and started really looking at, you know, how can we use this to help our bodies? And that's where he came up with the idea, okay, if we can put a little bit of compression, it's about the same amount as a necktie. So it's not a lot, um, but if we can put a little bit of compression on these jugular veins outside here, your neck, that's gonna help you know, slow that blood just slightly. And that's where his theory came from. And they originally tested it with rats and pigs. So they use uh, large animals first, took that theory, tested it, saw incredible results, over 80% um, uh, reduced brain damage in those animals while using jugular vein compression. And then that's where they kind of took it from, okay, well, if we can do it in animals, can we do it to people? Right. Can you break down, and I'm going to use the term dumb it down for me a little bit more, but you know, when you say brain slosh, someone who may not be uh, in the medical world may not know what you're talking about. Can you just dumb it down to like the simplest form of what the collar does when you see a little bit of pressure like a necktie? So when you put a little bit of pressure on that, like what that does from layman's terms? Yeah, and I, I have a visual that I'll show you and I'll yeah, see yeah. if it shows up for you. But yeah. So essentially your brain, which is this red fluid here, is sitting in fluid within your skull. And that's what this, this water is here. And so when you have any type of impact, your brain can freely, freely move within that fluid. So whether it's a big impact or a small impact, your brain is moving. It's always floating in your skull. What we're trying to do is eliminate that extra space. So now we have a jar that has green, which is your brain, and it has a little bit more water in it. So now all that, that little bit of extra space is removed. So when you have an impact, your brain just doesn't have the ability to slosh or to move within your skull. Mm. Um, the other demonstration that we talk about is like taking rocks in a jar with water. And when you shake that, the rocks are gonna move. Mm. Now, if you fill the water up completely to the brim of that same jar and you shake it, the rocks don't move. And that's essentially what we're trying to do is eliminate as much of that movement as possible because that movement is what stretches and tears the fibers in your brain that causes right. the symptoms and the damage of traumatic brain injury. And essentially for those who don't know, concussions, like you said, are when the brain starts to rattle against the skull because in, fo you know, in football, when you go helmet to helmet with somebody, you're gonna get that impact of that brain hitting the side of your skull. I'm not sure if you've gone to high school youth yet, but what do you see the vision for the Q collar as far as players wearing it across all, like you said, you have military, you have sports, like where is Q collar going um, in the future? 
Yeah, you know, we look at it like a device that can help all athletes, um, not just football players, but, you know, you look at lacrosse, you look at soccer, you look at hockey, you know, even sports like volleyball and field hockey and, you know, sports that you don't think have contact in them, there is still that room for brain slosh. There's still impacts, um, whether it's physically getting hit, hitting the ground, there's still brain movement. So we really look at the Q collar as a device that can be worn by all athletes in all activities to help protect their brains. And I use this analogy with our athletes when I'm explaining it to them. Um, we talk about it, it's like a seatbelt for your brain. So mm. when you get in your car every day, you put your seatbelt on. That doesn't mean you're gonna get in an accident. But what it means is that if you are going to get into an accident, it's going to help mitigate some of your injuries and it can help mitigate the severity of an injury. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not a guarantee, just like, you know, a seatbelt manufacturer can't tell you nothing's going to happen to you. But we all know and we've all learned that it can help you. So you do it. We look at the cue collar like a seatbelt, Whether, whatever activity you're doing, you put it on. It doesn't mean you're going to have an issue. But if there is an, an injury or if you do have an impact, it's going to help mitigate as much of those injuries as possible and the severity of an injury if it does occur. So we would like to get to the point where just like you get in your car and put your seatbelt on every day, every time an athlete steps on the field for training, for practice, for a game, they put on their cue collar. Right, uh, right. I always, always like to mention to folks, you know, helmets, mouth guards, you know, equipment like shoulder pads, that stuff does not have FDA clearance which is really what makes this unique from those pieces of equipment. This truly is a medical device. It's a class two medical device and it has that FDA clearance that number one tells you it's safe for you to use. It will do you no harm. And secondly, it's proven effective, you know, through the studies and the research over 25 studies um, completed, all reviewed, all peer reviewed and published um, has proven has proven that it is effective in protecting your brain. Right. I want to talk a little bit about the collar itself now. So uh, can we talk about the fit of it? You know, you mentioned it to be like, okay, helmet first, collar next. How easy is it to put on? Uh, how comfortable is it? You know, I want to talk about just all the measurements for an athlete where if I do purchase one, what's next? Yeah, great question. So yeah. the collar comes in sizes. It's based on your neck size. So the easiest way to measure your neck, we tell parents and athletes and trainers, is you just want to get a soft measuring tape. And you just wanna put it around the middle of your neck, which is the slimmest part of your neck, so right in the middle. And you wanna have a nice, tight second skin fit, right? So measure it nice and tight. Um, guys that get custom dress shirts will get a neck measurement. So you can also kinda of use that number as a guidance, but you're gonna to wanna to measure down. So you wanna have a tight fit. My neck is like 12 and a quarter, so I wear a size 12. The collar starts at size 11 and it goes up to 18. So I'll show okay. you a little, little difference in sizes, but this is a 12, yeah. which is my size, and this is an 18. So this 18, you know, size is typically what we find our NFL players that are linemen or trench guys wearing. So 17, yep. 18. Um, and then we see like 16, 17 or more for our skill guys. Um, and then 15, 14, 15, we find a lot of like lacrosse players in it. Okay. Um, women's athletes are typically that 11 to 14. I wear a size 12. Once you get your neck measurement and your collar, all you have to do is slide it around the back of your neck, right in the middle. Every collar comes with this measuring tool. So this is important because the fit is definitely crucial to it working correctly and it being comfortable. So there's, you'll see a notch here, and then you'll see this flat ridge. You wanna have both tips of the collar within those two areas. So you put one side in the notch and then the other side just has to be somewhere in this flat plane. Once that, that's confirmed, that means you're wearing the right size. And it's really important that you have this gap in the middle. So the tips are about anywhere from an inch and a half to two and a half inches apart. And that's because you don't want the tips to be over your, your trachea, over your throat, because mm -hmm. the jugular veins actually run on the back of your ears down the side of your neck. So you want the pressure to be on the side of your neck not the front. And if gotcha. those tips are too close, it's gonna push into your throat. It's not gonna give you the optimal amount of pressure and it's gonna be uncomfortable. So right. we tell athletes, first and foremost, find your right fit, put it on, and then give yourself a couple of sessions to get used to it. So just like you break in wearing a knee brace or you break in wrist guards 
or you break in a new helmet or our lacrosse guys tell us it's like breaking in brand new gloves. Mm -hmm. You just want to give yourself a day or two to acclimate to it. So we suggest you put it on for, you know, 10 to 20 minutes, go for a jog, get your heart rate up, take it off, put it back on 10 to 20 minutes, have a catch, you know, physically move, get your heart rate up, um, you know, jump into a drill, take it off. Do that for about three or four cycles. And typically by the second day, most athletes don't even remember it's on. They don't feel right. it. It's just like another piece of equipment. It doesn't change your mobility. It doesn't affect your ability to communicate. You can hear I'm talking fine. Right. Interfere with your shoulders or any movement. Um, it really just becomes like a helmet, a mouth guard, a shoulder pad, you know, a knee brace. So my first thoughts, it's while you have it on, just questions. So my first thing is just comfort, right? So you said it's just, it's just something you have to get used to. And then I guess my second thought, just being you know, a former football player and a current coach, range of motion, like, yeah. are you still able to, okay, full range of motion, yeah, okay. Complete range of motion. Yeah. I, tell, I tell guys this, um, it's like wearing a necktie. So the minute when you put a necktie on, the first like five minutes, you're like, oh. This yeah, it's the worst, like, yeah. <laughs> And then after 10 minutes, you forget your own mind, yep. right? It's the same mentality. It's you put it on, you give yourself a few minutes to kind of just forget that it's there, you know, just, you know, just move on, start doing your normal routine. And to, and honestly, most guys, after they wear it for a while, they feel naked without it. You mm. know, it becomes a part of, of what they do and how they feel. And so Luke Keekley, who wore it for three seasons in the NFL, 17, 18 and 19, you know, he talked about when he wasn't wearing it, you know, he would get freaked out because he would feel naked, you know, if he, yeah. if he forgot to put it on. Megan Klingenberg, who was a part of the U.S. National Women's Soccer Team, you know, won a gold medal, the Olympics. She was worn it uh, playing for the Portland Thorns. And she says the same thing, that she can't step on the pitch without wearing it because it is a part of how she feels. And, you know, she loves it. Yeah. Now, while you have this on, so just visually, so our viewers can see it too. So where is the pressure exactly coming from? You said it was coming from the jugular vein, which is in the back here. So yeah. this part here is a little bit looser. Yeah, um, so you can see the tips here, you know, there's space here, you know, where yep. my finger can meet, you know, that's not pressing directly down. The tips kind of flare out. So here's what it looks like without, I have a sleeve on it. So we come with team colored sleeves. Mm -hmm. This is it naked, just plastic, which can also be worn as is. Some guys like the plastic, some guys like, you know, this uh, moisture wicking fabric, but you can see the tips flare out here. So the tips kind of flare out. And then this flat part, this is where we're putting the pressure on your jugular vein. And that's why you want to have these side uh, areas on the side of your neck, right? You don't want these on the front of your neck. Yep. That's why the fit is so important. Okay, so now I, I want to talk about if I'm a team or a coach watching this right now, how do I buy this for my team? Is there team discounts I can get? Or how do I go about contacting you guys to get uh, this you know, fitted for my team, essentially? Yeah, absolutely. So um, on our website, you know, Q30.com, you can buy them individually. So that's direct to consumer purchases. Uh, but there's a team portal as well. So we do have team discount opportunities um, for teams, for schools, for entire athletic departments. And so you just have to request to, to contact someone at Q30. Um, we'll get back to you and basically lay out to you the different options. Um, we provide education opportunities as well. So we can do Zoom sessions. Um, we can send videos. We can make sure that athletes, their parents, their athletic trainers, their team positions all feel like they understand the product um, and can answer any questions for them along with um, ordering the product is actually made in the USA. So our distribution house is in Wisconsin. So everything is made and shipped out of the US. So inventory is very available. And then, like I mentioned, we do make team sleeves. So um, retail color sleeves, you know, go with all different team uniforms, purple, blue, red, orange, yellow, green, you name it. Um, there are these colors, they can match your team uniform. And then if teams or schools want to purchase custom sleeves, that's also an option. So we can actually put your school logo or your team logo on the sleeve as well. Um, that takes a little bit longer to order. I think it's typically a four week process. Um, but that's another option and we have found that you know athletes and teams like to get their their logo on product and um it really matches up and hooks back to their their uniform perfect okay because i know you know for me as a coach like i would you know i'd like to get my athletic trainer involved with mm -hmm. this to make sure that she or he is on the same page before we go ahead and book order these so you said that you'll talk to directly to these athletic trainers and get them on board via zoom and anything else they need 
Yes, absolutely. So we have a medical advisory board as well. Um, and we have athletic trainers, um, doctors, team physicians on that advisory board. So they can talk to us and then we can also connect them with anyone on our medical advisory board if they have more questions. We also have all the studies published. So um, we can give you that link, Chris, that you can put with this. Yeah, please do. We'll put it below. Uh, yeah. Each. All the yep. research, all of it's been peer reviewed and published. It's all in one easy ebook. They can click on it. They can review the studies themselves. Um, the FDA clearance is also can be included so you can read, you know, how the FDA cleared it and their process. Um, but we are um, happy to answer any questions. And then our website as well will have all this information on it. Perfect. So you can visit Q30.com to find out more. Again, we'll link it in the description below. Uh, Suzanne Williams, I appreciate you taking the time coming out. Any last words before we sign off? No, we just, you know, listen, Chris, thank you. We appreciate you. You know, we feel like it is every athlete's right to advocate for their health and safety. And so we really want athletes and parents and coaches and administrators to understand, like, this is a step it's an easy step that athletes can take to help protect what means the most to them, you know, their brain that needs to help them long beyond their days on the field. Right. And if we can help promote brain health um, and give athletes the ability to be their own advocates, we feel like this is a message that needs to get out to as many parents and, and athletes as possible. So right. thanks for having me. I appreciate it.